The eyes are 63, the nose are 55, the motion is agreed to. The question now is that Clause 9 stand past. I call the Honourable Member Grant Robertson. Thank you, Mr Chair. Clause 9 is a curious clause. It's a clause that I didn't think the ACT Party would ever promote, because this clause could in fact be called the two classes of citizenship, brackets, two classes of membership uh, clause. Because what this will mean is that on the 1st of January 2012, if this bill passes before the 1st of January 2012, there will in fact be two types of students. One type of student will be somebody who is about to enrol for the first time at an institution, and they will effectively come under the voluntary membership regime. Other students, for instance those students in a summer school who perhaps began their study before the 1st of January 2012, will continue to be members of a student's association. So that's what this clause does. It actually creates the confusion of two types of students being at an institution at the same time on the 1st of January 2012. And that seems to be a, a curious clause, but then again it fits with the overall issue that we have with this bill, that in fact the bill again seems to be not so much about creating the choice the illusion of choice that the other side would have us believe, but in fact is about making sure that students' associations are weakened and then eventually destroyed, because that will be the effect of this bill. That on the first, when the students come to enrol after the 1st of January 2012, as is noted in, in, the, uh, in the first part of Clause 9, they will not be enrolled in their students' association. So those students showing up having to pay thousands of dollars of fees, trying to get together the money for their bond for their accommodation, trying to pay for their textbooks, trying to pay for all the other things associated with their course costs, are now to be told if there is somebody there promoting what it want, means to be a member of the Students' Association, although under an earlier clause passed tonight, who knows whether even saying, would you like to join the Students' Association, is probably undue influence now. But all of those costs are going to be falling on somebody who arrives on the 1st of January 2012. And then the people on the other side of the House tell us, oh, well, people will just pay the money. They'll just pay the money for the Students' Association fee. That's the problem. Because there's no informed choice, because students are not actually being given information about what it means to be in the Students' Association, what are the services that they get for being in the Students' Association, what, is, what are the benefits for them of being part of that organisation? We know, the evidence from Australia tells us, that membership will decline quickly, and then we get into the self-fulfilling prophecy that students' associations are not able to offer the services to attract members, and they begin and that to wither away and die. And that is the effect of bringing this in on the 1st of January 2012 for those, uh, those members. For those people who have been already summer school members, uh, already um, enrolled in summer school, and therefore their membership under Clause 9 continues, goodness only knows what kind of services they're going to get. Because as the Students' Association isn't getting the new income from the students who would have been coming in from the f at the 1st of January 2012, goodness knows what kind of services there are actually going to be available. And that is the problem with this bill, Mr, Mr Chair, is that while the rhetoric from the other side is about choice, the end result is about the destruction of students' association and the services that they provide. And, and I, we haven't heard a lot from Mr Peachy, who was the chair of the committee. He spoke at the very beginning of this debate. And, and I would like to hear from him again, because I would like to hear from him to give us an honest assessment of what he heard as the chair of the select committee about the value of students' associations because I sat through a number of those submissions, as he did, and we heard about the value of students' association. We heard about the students who have been, were enabled to continue to study because of the advocacy and input of students' associations. We had a fantastic video conference from Waikato University where the, about the most apolitical student you could ever find, not in the category that Mr Henare likes to tell us of, of activists and young Labour and young Greens. This was a completely apolitical student who came along 
off his own bat to say, if it hadn't have been for the Waikato Students' Union, I wouldn't have been able to carry on studying because of a, an incident involving an insurance company and a fire in a flat where the Students' Union were the, acted as the advocate for that student. So I'd love to hear Alan Peachy get up because I know he's actually a reason, Mr Chair. Mr Chair. Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Member Louise Upstart. Oh, Thank you, Mr Chair.